thank you everybody for um, joining. Um, our audience is going to slowly grow as we kind of move throughout this call. It's a common theme that we have. Um, but before we kind of get into things, I obviously have to introduce everybody. Um, of course, uh, myself, uh, my name is Hunter. I'm a community manager over here at Arbitrum. Uh, we have uh, Pat McNabb, the co-founder of Tracer, uh, Adam, the uh, you know, business development over at Tracer, uh, as well as Issy, or I'll refer to you as Corn, uh, <laughs> product manager um, <laughs> you know, for Pools uh, Tracer as well. Um, you know, how, how's everyone, how's everything going today, guys? Yeah, going yeah, pretty good. as well. Absolute pleasure to, to, to be involved, Hunter. Thanks for, thanks for putting this one on and yeah. Very, very eager to engage with some of the incredible community you built up around Arbitrum. Of course, no, and, and likewise, I, I know uh, uh, we definitely are going to have like a little bit of both communities, Arbitrum and Tracer, of course, uh, kind of meshing together today. Uh, so, you know, obviously for anyone in the crowd, feel free to leave um, any questions or comments uh, in the Tracer AMA chat uh, we have on the left. And, um, you know, we'll kind of just take it from there. But uh, before we do kind of get into, you know, everything Tracer related, uh, can we kind of give a brief overview of what Tracer is for anyone who may not be uh, too familiar uh, with Tracer in general? Yeah, sure thing. So Tracer is a smart contract protocol for derivatives. So um, towards the September of last year, we launched natively our Perpetual Pools product onto Arbitrum. And what this financial contract enables is for people to mint and burn um, different leverage long and short positions if, if you've got an Oracle price feed. So uh, we've seen since September about $350 million in volume traded through the perpetual pool contracts uh, with tokens being traded on Balancer and natively at the Tracer smart contract level, um, a variety of different tokens such as a 3x long Bitcoin token or a 3x short Ethereum token. And more recently, in the last couple of weeks, we've seen both Tokamak, Tokamak markets and, uh, and Link markets also being introduced on the platform. Uh, but more generally, sort of the, the longer term vision for, for Tracer is to be a, a, a smart contract piece of infrastructure that um, individuals can connect to in the, in the same way as financial institutions currently have access to, to derivatives in, in the traditional financial world. Uh, we really want to open up access and and building on top of Ethereum and, and Arbitrum, it really provides an incredible way to do so. Uh, the, the incredible uh, market creation or, or low cost in setting up markets that you do have on Arbitrum and, and, and Ethereum using smart contract technology means that you can start experimenting with a few new and different uh, markets that haven't existed before. So one market that we're particularly interested in, and keen on providing to the world is a fuel market where uh, Uber drivers, for example, or, or truck drivers can actually manage their risk in their price, price exposure to fuel. So um, being able to hedge out uh, that, that real world risk and instantly um, budget for a month of fuel, let's say, um, utilizing the Tracer smart contracts at the base layer. Um, so yeah, m more generally, um, we're going to keep offering uh, derivative smart contract templates through the, the Tracer factory uh, in a similar way to, to how Uniswap and, and a few other AMMs offer a permissionless deployment of, of new markets given ERC-20 inputs. Um, Tracer will enable uh, the creation of many different markets that, that service different needs and uh, the Arbitrum infrastructure is certainly helpful in, in doing that. No, definitely. I, th thank you for that. Uh, you know, kind of overview of, of what Tracer is. Um, it, it's 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 funny. Like I, I can almost imagine, like you know, uh, <laughs> a truck driver just chilling in his truck, trying to trade on his phone as a phone. You know, <laughs> like, you know, like uh, go go long on, on a on the on the fuel he's about to use. <laughs> yeah, know? well, I, I think there's a there's a big big gap right now as to how finance yeah. is being communicated to people, um, and there's a massive opportunity in actually simplifying these products and and making them just price insurance that, that people can buy simply through like a, a neo banking app or or even through the uber interface like integrating it at that level and connecting up to, to ethereum in, in that sense there's going to be so many different ways that finance is actually connecting to the user which is uh, what what we're really really excited about at tracer yeah and you know i i think um I think especially uh, like perpetuals just in general, I think like there's definitely like, you know, if if Uniswap or, or any of those regular kind of like, you know, like like bare bone dApps are uh, like, like confuse people that I think perpetuals will definitely throw people for a loop um, just in general, you know, just because of the nature of how the product works. 
Um, so, you know, kind of kind of off that, you know, what differentiates tra Tracer from its competitors? Is it, is, it, is it its ease of use? Is it kind of how it's structured? Um, can you kind of give me a little more uh, background on that? Yep. So uh, right now there there aren't any uh, really high high volume or high liquidity protocols offering leveraged tokens uh, to to the market that can be traded in a variety of different exchanges. So with Tracer, what you can do is you can create a three x long Bitcoin token, for example, and and you can then go ahead and trade that on Uniswap or trade that on Balancer. Uh, so currently we we do have markets on Balancer on Arbitrum where you can just very simply click and and gain 3x exposure to to bitcoin and then there's no worried about no worries about getting liquidated no worries about maintaining a margin which sort of we, we were keen on abstracting out some of the complexities that were associated with trading traditional perpetual swaps so the pools are, are, are tokenized positions where um, you can get effectively liquidated in the sense your, your position can go down to zero, but you're still holding the ERC-20. So when the price goes back up, you're going to be realizing the, the gains in that position without actually being liquidated. Um, so that's sort of a key key piece of differentiation as no team has really been successful other than Tracer in bringing these leveraged tokens to market. Wow, did I just hear that I can just go long on things without getting liquidated? Oh God, <laughs> that's just a, that's I think exactly right. <laughs> I think you're rolling up the apes. Um, <laughs> well, you, you mentioned a little earlier uh, as well that you had um, uh, you just recently launched like the uh, the uh, Tokyo market as well as I think is the the Euro USD market. Um, what other markets are coming next? Uh, and just in general, like, can you kind of elaborate a little bit on how new markets can be created? Because I think like products like these. Um, like would would work for like a lot of different obvious uh, tokens out there, of course, you know. Yep. Yeah. So coming with V two, which will be uh, launched towards the end of February uh, next month, uh, we're going to be offering permissionless deployment of new perpetual pool markets. So if you have an ERC twenty to clear the market and an Oracle price feed, what you can do is just simply input those two variables and deploy a new market. Again, in the same way that you could have two ERC twenties and then just create a new Uniswap market. Uh, so that's something that we're we're really really excited to see the experimentation that can occur on that front um, in creating launching new like chain link feeds uh, to to support new markets on that front. Uh, but one one market that we're particularly excited about launching alongside V two is a punk uh, floor index so uh, in gaining broader exposure oh, wow. to crypto punks whether short or long you can hold a tokenized position um, that represents the the index of the the punks so that's a that's a price feed that we've been working on for the last uh, month now and it's something that, that we're we're very excited to offer um, as at the the v2 launch it's going to be incredible to see uh, people that can't necessarily afford to own a a full punk to to gain some exposure and and sort of bet on bet on the market uh, prices moving, whether whether it be up or down. In, in addition to that, we also have you know the members that are actually holding CryptoPunks can hedge their exposure to the price. Um, so an effective hedging mechanism yeah. for users that actually hold those CryptoPunks. Oh, interesting. So then, can I, can we kind of uh, dig a little deeper there? I um, mean, just in general, then, because obviously CryptoPunks are on um, you know Ethereum, like layer one. Uh, but it sounds like the product, of course, is going to be on the you know Arbitrum layer too. So, like you know, how does that kind of work there? You know, like like how are we able to kind of you know, uh, like can be exposed to punks on Arbitrum? Yep. So because it's a derivative uh, contract, uh, what that means is you simply just need the Oracle price feed um, to to create that market. So uh, you don't actually need the underlying punk to exist on Arbitrum. You just need uh, you need solid pricing to ensure that you can mint and, and burn the perpetual pool token. So um, with that uh, in mind, you, you don't require the, the punks on Arbitrum. You can just simply mint and burn based off of the price that's being fed in by an Oracle. Wow. This is why I love crypto because everything is so like modular. You know, like the DeFi Legos is really is a thing, <laughs> you know? Yeah, certainly. Certainly is. So yeah, in the in that answer you gave me there a little earlier, you mentioned something about V two. Uh, can you kind of give us a little overview of uh, of what V two is bringing to uh, Tracer? 
Yeah, sure thing. I, I might get Izzy to, to jump in as she's been leading up the product um, there for Perpetual Pools and just maybe provide the, the highlights for us uh, for, for this call. Yeah, absolutely. So particularly with V2, we're looking at um, a couple of things. The biggest one um, is implementing a new mechanism which uh, mitigates the effect of something called volatility decay. Um, so this basically allows our, our tokens to be held for longer periods of time um, you know, without experiencing the effects that we've seen in V1. So that's a pretty um, exciting way that we are sort of following through on our vision of having people, you know, have potentially cold storage, um, you know, leverage positions. Um, another sort of major part of that is going to be um, for V2 is the permissionless deploy factory. So um, I'll drop in a, a link sometime soon to um, some sort of mock-ups of what the factory is going to look like in the future. But we're hoping that, Eventually with V2 um, and moving forward, we're going to be able to have people using a really friendly UI to have this permissionless deployment. You know, it's um, really exciting for us to see people interacting with smart contracts and deploying these new products without actually having to touch any solidity. Um, so that's that's one of the things that we're working towards. Um, and one of the sort of really, really exciting part is the um, removal of minimum commit size. So we're going to be batching um, all of our commits in V2. So it means that, you know, we're no longer sort of, uh, we no longer have a barrier to entry for people with like smaller order sizes who want to take um, leverage positions. So sort of three really key elements there, long-term holds, permissionless deploy factory and no minimum commit size. Um, they're the ones that sort of stand out for me. Um, Pat, if you've got anything to add. Yeah, no, I think it'll be great to see people with even just 50, 50 or $60 worth of, ETH or USDC, let's say on Arbitrum, uh, being able to mint, uh, mint a pool token. Uh, I think that was something with, with B1 um, that, um, that, that we just really, really missed out on catering to a lot of users. So uh, eager to see that happen. And, and I think something like that is also very, um, you know, like uh, it's, it's, it's very important in a lot of different ways, it's especially in the whole like narrative where it's like, uh, I guess just kind of like going down to like the basics of like kind of making money. You always hear people talking about like you need a lot of money to invest in the first place. Um, and I think, you know, having something like that, you know, like it, it helps people not not have to have so much in the first place to uh, necessarily like 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 make a lot, you know, afterwards. Right. I mean, like, you know, it, 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 it almost actually in a way kind of deters. I, I would say I wouldn't say deters, but it's like also, it's like almost like an alternative to people kind of dumping like, you know, their money whatever small amount it may be, into a meme coin that, you know, <laughs> may not be the best bet financially, uh, into maybe like a leverage long position on ETH or BTC or, you know, something a little more, uh, something a little more stable, even though it is leveraged, you know, versus a meme coin. Because meme coins are, geez, meme coins are like, 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 it's like a leveraged version of crypto Twitter. Sounds really, very, very scary. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah, it's uh, certainly something, something to look forward to with Trace of too. Yeah, uh, I kind of wanted to touch a little bit. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to say, uh, just an extended vision of that. Like not only, you know, I guess the, the point on having, um, you know, enough capital to actually invest into, you know, NFTs uh, or, or, or something similar. Uh, we're also looking to extend our vision out to, you know, the real world assets. So something like the, the housing market. Um, if there's a certain housing market that has, you know, uh, high capital and high barrier to entry, uh, you can take a you know a long exposed leverage position on that market on that housing um, you know it, certain particular area to actually you know leverage yourself up to you know having the amount of capital to then potentially buy you know a house for yourself. So I think that's that's the you know the real world aspect that we're looking to get um, when we move further along with our product. Now, is that also going to be achievable kind of the same way uh, we spoke earlier a little bit about the, um, for example, like getting the price feeds, uh, you know, from Oracles as well, or? Yeah, same kind of model um, in terms of just getting that price feed modeling correct um, and then putting that through to the blockchain and then having us use that. Yeah, no, then I definitely think, I mean, like, like because I, stuff like that really, really does kind of bring uh, it, it kind of takes crypto out of like th out of like the bubble that it's in, and kind of and it really you know introduces it's like your, like your real world life. I mean, I, I I truly think in like you know like a, like a couple years time, I mean, who knows maybe even sooner, that like people are going to be interacting with smart contracts and not even know it. 
you know, because like, at the end of the day, like all this stuff is going to connect, you know, probably with oracles um, to just both the real world and, you know, this digital world that we've kind of been, that we're all living in. <laughs> it's so interesting. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's going to be the uh, the backbone of transactions, the, the global settlement layer that, that we can rely on, um, which is, is going to be incredible rather than having separate ledgers and, and separate uh, separate clearing houses within the current financial industry that really have no idea where counterparty risk lies within the system, uh, having everything sort of on the same same server, everyone has full transparency where risk is sitting. It, it really does uh, provide for a much better system. Facts down with AWS. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I wanted to touch a little earlier about um, I'm, I'm one of the um, introductions uh, uh, to V2 that you guys were talking about, uh, specifically uh, the the long term leverage token thing. Uh, so how does that kind of differentiate what perpetual pool tokens are right now? Yep. So right now, uh, there's currently a spot price, uh, just a, a standard Oracle Oracle price that's getting input into the V1 contracts. And um, what this means is that uh, the tokens are suffering from a little bit of what's called volatility decay, um, which is basically when the prices go go up and down, um, the tokens just from a mathematical phenomena start to decrease in value in a similar way to, to you paying out a funding rate if you're holding a perpetual swap position. Um, so moving on to V2, uh, what we'll have is a lot less of that de- decay that's actually occurring within the token. So um, the, the current V1 tokens right now, after a few months, you're going to be suffering from a little bit of volatility decay associated with it. So you won't fully realize the, the, either the gains or the losses that are associated with, uh, with that position that you initially minted. Um, whereas the upgrade with V2 is massive in the sense that now you can hold these tokens uh, in, in cold storage again or, or in your wallet um, for, for months on end and suffer significantly, significantly less uh, volatility decay or, or decay of the token. So it's really a massive upgrade and, and it means that these tokens can much more simply exist within um, decentralized exchanges, exist within um, tr- trading on Curve or or being able to be used within Rari as a, as a, a collateral for, for lending or borrowing. Um, so it's going to really open up um, fungible leverage, which is something that we haven't seen exist uh, within DeFi uh, to this point. And I definitely could see that as something that, you know, would appeal a lot more to, to like, just like the average user. You know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not sure if that's, uh, you know, like is, is that something that would be differentiated against between like, for example, if there was like a uh, Bitcoin version of that, so like a wrapped Bitcoin version of that and just a regular wrapped Bit- Bitcoin um, or you know, like perpetual pool token? Or like, would that, that just be like, you know, like like the token for wrapped Bitcoin and, you know, it, it would just inherit those, uh, you know, new features of being long term? Yeah, that's right. And uh, it could be a 3x wrapped Bitcoin token, for example. So you could buy that 3x token and um, you can leave it in your wallet. And depending on the price movements of Bitcoin, you're, you're going to realize that 3x, 3x gain. Yeah, I could definitely see that being like um, a, a, a pretty big product, especially for like uh, centralized exchanges. Now, I'm all about decentralized stuff, but we all know that centralized exchanges are like the first point of contact for people, for regular people uh, coming into crypto. Um, and this could almost be kind of like their quote unquote degen option, you know, you can get the regular at Bitcoin or Bitcoin, I guess, or you can get the three X version, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's it. And you're not worrying about margin accounts or, or, or interacting with uh, any liquidation mechanism. So it's, it's really quite a simple, uh, product to understand if, if you can grasp the idea of having leverage associated. So we're definitely going to see the. The perpetual pool tokens being market made on, on a variety of different centralized exchanges as they do just exist as erc20 so um, they can really be be input into any um, any standard that accepts erc20s Interesting. and i assume that would include uh for example uh, i think probably the most uh you know most known uh, index is probably dpi uh would dpi also yeah. be able to you know have that leverage uh, part part of it too as well yeah, exactly. So um, with the DPI price feed, the Oracle price feed, we can spin up a 3x DPI market or a 5x DPI market on Arbitrum uh, with, with launch of V2. Awesome. Look at that. Well, 
one thing that I uh, we haven't mentioned yet, which I mean, I almost apologize for not for not doing, is is the token. I mean, like you know, people love talking about tokens. So in this case, uh, you know, what what kind of a use does the tracer token uh, pro- provide people? Yeah, so right now within the Trace community, uh, the TCR token's being used as a governance right, governance right purely. Um, so we've seen fairly active governance over the past six months, which is maybe something that Adam can speak a bit more on. Um, we've, we've had a fair few community initiatives where people have been getting involved and helping build out the products and, and helping decide as to which new markets are being launched um, with the vote of, of the Tracer token. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's really, really being used to govern the way that we trade uh, on Tracer and uh, eager to see how that uh, continues progressing. I think um, the most successful governance tokens at the moment, uh, you're seeing uh, protocol governors really being engaged in deciding which new markets are being created and um, you're seeing a level of tribalism um, between competing DeFi protocols or um, competing DeFi tokens where um, you're really able to engage with different communities and build products for different communities based on the way in which people are voting, um, which is yeah, something with like Web2 and, and traditional products that we weren't really able to quantifi- quantifiably measure um, with voting uh, with, as, as there weren't any um, means of, say, using a stock to, to, to vote on the exact products that were being used. So, um, it, yeah, the, the, the Tracer token is going to continue to be used to, to govern the ecosystem. In addition to that, like um, it also means that governors can vote for new products to be created. So if, if a, a certain team was to create a new type of financial contract uh, that was a bit different to you know the, the current perpetual pools product that we have, uh, they could whip up a, a you know a, develop a contract for that, propose for you know that proposal to, to go through to our governance interface, uh, and then from there, governors within Tracer DAO, which are effectively Tracer token holders, can then vote and and you know effectively be the decision makers in uh, having a certain uh, financial contract added to the, the Tracer product suite. Awesome. Yeah, and I, I think uh, like, you know, uh, protocol tokens, or, I mean, I guess, you know, governance tokens in this case are always an interesting thing to talk about, especially because um, I, I, I think uh, a misunderstanding that that's out there is that, uh, you know, just because a, a protocol or a product or what have you um, has a token doesn't mean the entire thing uh, can be governed by it. you know what i mean like what like you know if tomorrow the tracer community said hey let's let's go ahead and take the governance token and rename tracer to um hunter you know <laughs> my name um you know that wouldn't happen uh what what can be governed and what can't be governed with with the tracer token um, I, i'm interested i'm actually gonna i'm actually gonna sli- slightly not completely disagree with you there hunter obviously there's there's some okay. things that I guess incentivized uh, community members not to, to vote against, aka voting for the Tracer DAO to, to be non-existent in the future. But um, I guess I guess um, you know anything can be voted on. So we've had a lot of uh, recent proposals pushed through for, for all sorts of measures of you know new contracts being added. Uh, currently, also new markets to be added to uh, you know the current tr- Tracer perpetual pools. Uh, that's going to be ch- changing in V2 with our permissionless deployment. Uh, version, but um, there's really there's no uh, you know current barriers in terms of if there's any idea that's that's put forth to the DAO, um, it's it's taken in and and kind of uh, I guess up to the DAO governance to be able to you know I guess effectively make the decision on whether that proposal goes through. So no complete barriers. Um, I guess it's it's obviously if if there's a proposal that goes through that's detrimental to the community. Um, you know, obviously those DAO governors are going to be voting against uh, such proposal. Great point. No, yeah. And, and, and you know, I think that's what makes, um, you know, like this space so interesting. I mean, you know, Web3 in general, right? Uh, just, just the fact that like there is, there isn't this, there isn't never necessarily like a right or wrong answer to anything. It's really just how you choose to go about it and how you choose to solve whatever uh, problem is thrown your way, right? Um, yeah, know, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, I'm sure you guys have kind of, um, come to uh, you know whatever types of uh, you know, you know, I'm sure you guys have had a bunch of issues thrown your way when, when, when creating Tracer and I'm sure Tracer V2 uh, can you kind of tell us a little bit about like about like the, the making of Tracer V2 and how, and how that kind of went for you you know if there were any kind of um, any kind of you know uh, roadblocks thrown your way and how you kind of overcame them 
Izzy, I'll, I'll pass that one yeah, for you. Yeah, I was going to say, um, you know, making a product and creating something, especially like through a DAO, it has its, it has its ups and downs. And, you know, it's, it's really, I think, been... Um, it's been a very like first principles centric development for us. And I guess like what I mean really by that is we have this like set of fundamental beliefs that like these financial tools should be accessible for everyone. And it's made the development process really interesting in that we're creating these like templates and working from a factory and we want to have input from our community and we want, you know, we want to see something that everyone can contribute to and everyone can use and, you know, that plays into different decisions that we make around the product in terms of making it as free as possible. So, you know, there's there's roadblocks there because sometimes things take longer, but ultimately we've had a very clear, like, vision for something that is, like, secure and accessible. So development-wise, it's been pretty enjoyable in the sense that we're building something that we really believe in, but roadblocks, like, sometimes the community will vote in, like, we want a new market and... <laughs> you know, it's, it's, you know, there's a, um, well, it's like, that's exactly what we're trying to work towards. So there's times where we have to sort of put aside something that we're working on directly that day and make something for the community that they really want. So, you know, overall, it's been really amazing. Um, but there's always times where, where we have a setback, but, you know, that's with everything, it's with every product. Yeah, no, and you know, I think that's it's awesome to hear. I mean, I'm, I'm obviously, I know you guys just put in. Um, I should also mention uh, the uh, kind of like a little a demo um, in the yeah. uh, Twitter chat. So, uh, guys, obviously, yeah, make sure to check that out. Drop that in. It's definitely worth just sort of having a look at. I think for a lot of people, the concept of permissionless deployment like may not hit home fully until you see that. Like, give me, you know, a, a contract. Um, give me an address for an oracle. Give me the leverage you want. We can recommend some parameters to make the market suitable for long-term holding um, and you just hit go, you know, and that's, that's really exciting. You'll see there's like a um, fee opt-in mechanism as well. So that's something we'll see with fee two is that we actually really want to encourage people to deploy markets, um, de deploy different permutations, use different collateral assets to, to shift how the exposure, um, you know, will perform for that pool. Um, and you can see there's a, an opt-in for people to accept up to 10% of the fees generated by the market, the annual fee. So hopefully we'll see, hopefully we'll see a lot of drops from that. But yeah, definitely check check those out. So something else um, we, we spoke about a little bit uh, today as well was uh, kind of you know uh, you know UI user user interface, and obviously that's going to be something that's going to be changing uh, with V2 as well. I can tell by the video. Um, do, do you guys envision uh, tracer kind of being, uh, you know, kind of just like a front end app that people kind of use, or also kind of like this infrastructure that can be kind of built on top of, you know, kind of like the whole DeFi Legos we were talking about earlier, or maybe even both. Yeah, we certainly uh, have the ambition of structuring tracers such that we're the infrastructure that people can build on top of and, and connect to. I think the, the leverage tokens are an incredible uh, first step down that path of um, the, the tracer pool tokens being traded on different DEXs and um, people creating different front ends on top of the, the V2 instance where you can just very simply click and gain um, three or five X exposure to Bitcoin or, or a punk index, let's say. Um, so yeah, we're, we're certainly building the contracts and, and, and the ecosystem such that they can very easily be plugged into and, and built on top of. Just as an yeah, example yeah. of that as well, uh, Patrick touched on it uh, at the start of the call, but, you know, uh, having something like the, the Uber, for Uber drivers, you know, plugging in uh, a Tracer Perpetual Pools market into the, you know, front end of, a, of an Uber app for Uber drivers to hedge their, expo you know, their price exposure uh, to fuel. Um, and that's, that's a really effective example and use case where, um, you know, Tracer's Perpetual Pools can be plugged in as infrastructure on the back end. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to add one one last point. So like the open source way in which we're developing these tools, I sort of see like we have quite a lean product team and I see the product team as nearly the custodians for, for basic access, at least for now. So we're hoping to release different toolkits and ways for people to come in and actually build on top of the Tracer contracts to build something that they actually want to access. So we've had people already come in and start like, constructing different front ends, um, using the tools that we've provided them. So if there are any like developers out there in the crowd, you know, we're really open to having people come in and, and build on top of 
you know, the really fundamental points that, that Pat touched on. So, yeah. Shameless plug there. <laughs> always, always shameless plug. <laughs> Love that. Awesome. In, in terms of a tracer of, you know, the protocol itself uh, and its future, uh, what is the team's main focus is? You know, is it to build more you know, DeFi native products? Is it to kind of uh, integrate with TradFi? Maybe anything NFT related? Yeah, we're, we're certainly going to um, continue to offer the market infrastructure um, that TradFi will be able to connect up to in the same way that just any app developer will be able to connect up to to gain access to these markets. So um, mid-year, we'll, we'll be pushing for a perpetual swap um, infrastructure that will also be accompanying the, uh, the, the perpetual pools there. Um, so it will act as another base layer primitive offered by Tracer. Um, but ideally, down the down the track, we're really starting to offer um, these risk management products uh, on top of the tracer infrastructure. Uh, again, whether it be uh, managing managing your price risk of your NFTs and these metaverse games, where um, you, you need to purchase an NFT to actually start playing or or earning an income on that, uh, and and you're at that point exposed to the full market fluctuations of that, whether it be a, a sword or a vest or whatever in-game item you need to buy um, that might be a substantial financial purchase for a lot of people, um, we'd, we'd hope to be offering price insurance. Um, that's, that's really the true beauty of derivatives is uh, allowing people to meaningfully manage their risk within the economy. So um, wherever, wherever risks existing, um, Trace is certainly hoping to provide a, a product that simply exists in the form of an API that people can um, simply plug into and offer to their users so that they can uh, really meaningfully manage the risk that they incur on, on the day-to-day. -day. I really like the, the idea of looking at um, you know, perpetuals and um, even potentially a leverage in that way, kind of the, the ability to kind of uh, hedge yourself or, you know, um, kind of <clears throat> use it as kind of like almost, almost as like a risk off thing. Um, but I think the, like the biggest, the biggest reason, I guess, I feel like maybe it's not used in that way, at least, I, at least uh, in my personal experience, um, is just because of the lack maybe of just like general knowledge of that, that that's out there about it or about people using it, I, I should say. Right. So, you know what I mean? Like, I, 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 I think if, if, uh, if people were maybe even educated a little bit more on how to manage the risk using protocols such as tracer or whatever whatever it may be um like they're like really really powerful tools uh you know if, if i were yeah. to ask you yeah go ahead and I, love to hear you speaking. I, I was up I was also just going to jump in there quickly. Like, yeah, I think Trace is also poising ourselves as you know offering to the education layer. You know, really right. simplifying how how users um you know like the ones you've just mentioned can can effectively act access these these products. Um, and you know, be more capital efficient with with their with their funding. Yeah, that's right. And I think um, things like insurance are really easy to understand financial products for people. Um, you're you've got either like an upfront purchase of insurance or or the ongoing um, ongoing payments for an insurance product. And I think when when you can deliver a financial product to people like that. Um, and, and really simplify the process and um, just boil it down to its core offering, which is uh, and helping people manage their risk in, in a very simple way. I think that's sort of what's what's been lacking from um, just the financial markets context. A lot of people hold Bitcoin or hold Ethereum, and um, sometimes they're, they're quite afraid of the volatility that could exist within that market, uh, maybe because they've got a loan out on that, that underlying um, token, or, or maybe they just want to... Um, they just want to make ends meet um, from a rent perspective or, or from, a, um, from, from a financial just outgoings perspective. And I think with Tracer, what, what we really want to do is be able to boil that down into a really easy to understand product where it's you've got a one click hedge now or, or one click um, gain price insurance at, or lock in your current um, exposure lock in your current value of Bitcoin without actually having to sell it. Um, this is this is certainly the power of derivatives that, uh, that financial companies, uh, sophisticated financial companies and, and large corporates with massive balance sheets have been leveraging for the past sort of 20, 30 years. Uh, but th there's some things that, or there are things that can be productized and made really simple for individuals to understand and, and access. And 
um, that's that's really the beauty of, of the infrastructure that's being developed within DeFi is that we can now connect up to these things really simply and then start serving them up in smartphone applications or start serving them up in uh, the, the typical interactions that you'd have on a day-to-day and package them up in really easy to understand software. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I, I think um, yeah, kind of on what you mentioned there a little bit about, um, you know, just people kind of look just like at ETH and BTC, like, you know, like a loan is kind of like very uh, volatile and fluctuating assets, you know, in, in, in a way, you know, I mean, you know, we're, we're all DeFi native users here. So we're all we're all fans of ETH, I, I would assume. Um, you know, I sleep very comfortably at night, comfortably at night, knowing that I have ETH. So to me, if I have a three X version of ETH, that I should sleep three X better, right? Am I wrong in that? <laughs> I think the math works out there. Yeah. Leverage sleeping. I reckon the math works out. <laughs> we need an oracle for that one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but um, before before we do, before we uh, kind of um, get into the community questions here, I kind of just wanted to ask you guys maybe like a kind of get something general uh, here and there. Um, you know, just about, just about like kind of crypto DeFi itself. Um, how do you guys kind of seeing, sorry, sorry how do you guys actually uh, uh, see, I should say, uh, perpetuals, um, like kind of play a role in, in this kind of, you know, um, in, you know, I would say like the future of DeFi. When I say the future of DeFi being just, cause you know, we, we all know DeFi moves very, very quickly. Um, and I definitely think, um, something that, that a lot of people have been seeing obviously are like, the rise, especially of kind of, uh, of, of perpetuals in general. I, I don't think I've ever seen like as many perpetuals kind of uh, come up as, as I have been recently. And, you know, it's only because the infrastructure there and obviously that the teams are there to do it. Like, you know, obviously, uh, you know, your team is, is, is obviously very, very good to, to come up with something as crazy as this. Um, so what, what do you think or where does the perpetual kind of, well, I guess we should say tracer, uh, place itself in this new world of DeFi? Yeah, so in, in traditional finance, um, derivatives are an incredible method of, of price discovery and um, and even providing market stability um, across the spot markets. Uh, in, in almost every single spot market in the world, you've got a derivatives market that uh, in terms of its volume and, and traders and and the amount of um, the amount of capital that are flowing through the derivatives markets, uh, they absolutely dwarf the the spot markets. Um, this is true for equities. This is true for commodities, and, and this is true for foreign exchange. You've got massive derivative markets that are aiding with price discovery and and risk management for the people that are um, buying and and holding the underlying spot. Um, within DeFi, we've certainly seen perpetuals uh, or, or even like. CFI, DeFi, or CFI crypto. Um, we've seen the use of perpetuals and the volume traded on perpetuals um, start to resemble um, what does occur in the traditional financial world, which is much higher volumes being traded in the derivatives market. As you've got, whether it be Bitcoin miners that are looking to manage the risk of Bitcoin, uh, or, or Ethereum miners uh, that, that are looking to uh, manage and, and offset their their ETH risk. Uh, you've got these these markets that have been in, been set up to um, to provide like meaningful tools for these these groups of people, and as more and more um, tokens and, and utility tokens are being created within the DeFi economy, let's say um, the Link token for for providing. Um, providing chain link data to these different networks, you're going to see more and more natural demand for people to manage their just crypto native risk. And obviously that comes along with um, a lot of people that are looking to speculate and, and trade these markets alongside um, the people that are actually gaining the utility, which is, which is great. Um, but yeah, to, to hit particularly on where Tracer will continue to position itself um, for these groups of people is just, again, providing very simple risk management tools for the people that actually need it. Um, on, on the mycelium front, we currently run a chain link node and um, we're not only exposed to um, the ETH uh, gas price fluctuations and, and the price of ETH, but as well as the link token. So um, we're undergoing a variety of different hedges and uh, and we, we take positions to, to help better manage risk and, and better ensure that uh, on a day-to-day basis, you can start to um, actually keep the lights on and, and manage a, a successful business. So uh, I think... Tracer more and more are going to provide these markets for 
for people that are looking to, to manage that risk. I think on a, on a general front as well, like perpetuals in general, uh, like, you know, it's the easiest way to access, you know, leverage positions relative to, you know, traditional financial mechanisms where, you, you know, usually it's, it's, it's getting a loan uh, and then using that loan to, you know, uh, I guess, trade again. Um, perpetuals, perpetual swaps, perpetual pools offer a really instant, instant access to, to leverage um, you know, leverage uh, vehicles to effectively uh, be, be more capital efficient. No, I, I definitely couldn't agree more on that. I mean, I, you know, I, I've, I've never even, it's, it's you know, before crypto, I, I've never even myself just uh, been, you know, been involved in economics actually at all. Um, but like after, after really kind of obviously being ingrained in the space and learning all about the different financial products that exist out there, uh, it's, it's really, it, you know, to me, I, I almost expect things to be, uh, you know, like readily available to me with a, with a you know, with a click of a wallet, uh, you know, and a button, um, and for me to be able to start using things, you know, that doesn't mean that I go out and start and start using perpetual protocols without, with, you know, without any, uh, you know, reading up on it first. But uh, I think it's such a, it's such, it's such a crazy thing to to imagine that we have today in 2022. I can't believe I'm saying 2022. Um, you know, the instant access to these financial products that were, that were once really, I mean, I mean, you know, even in general, like if you're a regular person that doesn't know about crypto, you still think that you have to go through these ho hoops and ladders to, to access stuff like this. But when in reality, it's just that I, you know, click of a button. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely incredible. And then going a step further and being able to just simply connect up to all these different financial primitives and like start building applications on top of them that, that really service people's financial needs. Uh, you're going to see a, a massive explosion of, of new interesting services that, that people are getting much better interest rates than they are by parking up their money in banks. They're, they're getting much more flexibility um, through the fungibility of these, these tokens and be able, being able to, um, manage manage your collateral and and move it around to different places um, people are going to be much more empowered uh, through this technology and uh, i'm really really eager to keep bringing it to market web3 baby yeah right. definitely let's get into uh some of the community questions here um we have one that was kind of dropped a little earlier uh it's, which kind of references uh, the, uh, the, the punk that we were talking about. Um, and they ask, uh, how do you guys get the price for a punk? Uh, and, and I think you mentioned earlier, but he asks, uh, is it average sales between all punks or is it over kind of the last 30 to 60 days? Like, they, I guess, how would that actually work? Yeah, so it's a um, it's a weighted weighted index uh, or time weighted index of most recent purchases um, and and floor prices for the punks. Um, with respect to the exact methodology, we're not going to open that up until uh, until the launch. But there's going to be a lot of transparency around how that pricing is achieved. Um, but yeah, m more generally, it's referencing the, uh, the the floor prices of of the entire set of punks. So. It doesn't favor a specific um, characteristic at all or a specific trait within punks, but um, when we're working with uh, with a team that prices different uh, punk NFTs and different NFTs to potentially be able to provide uh, an alien punk subset um, group or, or a specific trait um, and really get granular there. So um, yeah, certainly, certainly stay tuned. That's awesome. And, and if I may ask, is there a reason why you guys chose a uh, floor? Like, like you know, was there was there an option to go with like you know just average price and maybe eliminate any kind of you know outliers or? Uh, it's just a, an easier um, easy indicator to actually price um, rather than uh, some of the punks are, are fairly illiquid, as in they're not traded too often. Um, so it's quite difficult to actually gain pricing data for for those punks. Um, there's there's products that are. Uh, starting to provide appraisals for what those punks may be worth, such as Upshot. Um, so every hour, for example, they're um, they're having a, a guess um, that they believe to be within seven to fifteen percent of the uh, the actual true price of that NFT asset. And uh, I think they've gotten gotten a lot of the the guesses right as they've like priced a few auctions previously and predicted prices, and um, they've they've come up pretty pretty strong and pretty accurate. Um, but yeah, it, it'll primarily just be the, the floor pricing because with that, you can really gain a, a much more solid and non-exploitable pricing function. 
I think that's the biggest one, like non-exploitable. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's a tricky, tricky balance there. Yeah. Uh, okay. I think also the, the market there as well, like you have a lot more members uh, wanting to buy these, these crypto punks just to purely get into the crypto punk uh, atmosphere. And, you know, usually a lot of these members um, are, are purchasing the, the, you know, the lowest price floor punk. So effectively there's going to be more liquid, uh, you know, uh, pricing for those for those lower lower cost punks very true very true and i guess I, i've never really referred to anybody um uh, to their punk as like ugly uh, again I don't, I don't think there's like an ugly crypto punk per se so you know because you know some people like using them as their profile pictures and stuff like that so anyways okay well uh, you know i think we answered that question <laughs> uh, next question we have uh is can you speak briefly to where the oracle market currently is and what category what categories of new type, new data types slash feeds you you guys are seeing coming next to Tracer that may be uh, you guys may particularly find interesting? Yeah, so um, the, the punk market is certainly going to be an incredible one. But as well as that, we're also doing a bit of work with uh, the the Toucan team at the moment, uh, who help provide um, the carbon backed token um, for for Klima. Um, so there's a, there's a good chance with B2 quite soon after or, or during the launch, you'll be able to be trading carbon um, or a representation of carbon um, through through Tracer, which was will, will be incredible. Um, we're particularly interested in bridging the world of real world markets um, and, and this crypto infrastructure. So um, there'll certainly be a variety of different foreign exchange markets that are set up. Um, to, to be traded in with, with leverage, um, as well as a few different commodities markets such as gold and, and silver um, that, that we'll be getting out there. Um, but as well as that, we've also um, ideated a, a few different um, flippening markets, for example, um, such as being able to trade um, ETH going um, long, long ETH with respect to Bitcoin and, and, and oh. being, being able to um, capture the flippening. Um, similarly, with, uh, with apes and punks, um, we, we believe there's a product in, uh, in trading um, the, the, the two competing largest blue chip NFTs uh, there too. So, um, yeah, there's, there's a good cohort of markets um, that we're going to be pioneering with the Tracer infrastructure. Um, if there's any particular markets that, that you guys are keen on, we'd love to hear from you and, and, and work towards developing those as well. I think in addition to that, uh, something that we've also looked at is offering the ability for communities to you know, hedge their exposure to uh, the, the gaming NFT uh, communities such as you know, Axie Infinities. Uh, in addition to that, obviously, we, we mentioned the housing market just previously, um, but also on the lookout for things like you know, potentially climate uh, climate uh, data being, you know, having having exposure to climate data, uh, working with teams like D Climate. If there does so happen to be um, an ETH like slash Bitcoin, uh, you know, offering soon, uh, I'm definitely going to start a proposal to, to just call it the flipping. That's it. <laughs> like, 100%. <laughs> well, no, I mean, this is awesome. Um, um, of course, obviously, uh, I really thank you guys for all this. Uh, I like to call it alpha that you gave here today. Um, can you kind of give us like a little uh, idea of how we can kind of contribute to Tracer uh, if you, someone wants to and in the future? For sure. Izzy, did you yeah. want to jump in there? Or yeah, what was he? I mean, at, a, at an immediate level, if you were looking to contribute to the product, um, like I said, we're always super open. Um, jump in the Discord and, and get in touch with the team about if you're wanting to build directly with Tracer uh, and, and our product team. But generally speaking, I'm sure um, Adam's better touching on the community building side of things. Yeah, um, I guess if any, there's any contributors out there, um, no matter what your skill set, so whether it's you're a developer, whether you're a graphic designer, whether you're good at marketing, or whether you're good at you know coming up with new partnerships and, and ideas for a certain protocol, uh, Trace has got basically a spot for you in our in our squadron uh, squadron infrastructure. So our squadron infrastructure is basically DAO work, decentralized work, where any uh, contributor from from far and wide can come to our our Discord and our community. Uh, they can see a list of jobs that are that have been placed and and have been. Request tender, um, and anyone can come in and tender for a certain job. And then, oh, am I back? You're good. You're good. Yeah, we good. 
um, basically any, anyone from the, the community, anyone from far and wide can come in and tender for a certain role or job. Um, and then they are assigned to that task and paid a, you know, a certain remuneration for their, for their task that they've completed. Um, and then, yeah, there's also the ability for members to request new work. So if there's not a, a job that has been posted there, but you have an idea of how to help out Tracer Dow, um, there's definitely, there's, there's a spot for you to, uh, I guess, request for that job to be posted so that you, then you can be assigned to that uh, and then provide that work in, in, in uh, return for remuneration as well. Uh, yeah, as as Dave's just kind of commented there in the in the chat, there's a there's a link to that that's uh, in there to our public notion space, which which is all about that DAO work. Awesome. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, obviously, guys, I, I know most of you are probably in the Tracer AMA chat, anyways. But uh, take a look at take a look over there. Uh, Dave from Tracer just posted a, a couple of tokens that they already offer there that you can kind of check out yourself. I'll make sure to put in uh, the link to their Discord as well, so you can uh, you know of course participate if you uh, if you would like if you would like to. Uh, and obviously, Patrick, Adam, SC, I really appreciate you guys for coming on today and uh, giving us a you know this overview of Tracer and you know kind of speaking with the community. Yeah, Hunter, thanks, thanks so much for having us. And yeah, we're we're really really excited to, I guess, go forth with Arbitrum and create you know heaps of synergies for Arbitrum as well. Um, really really excited to see what Arbitrum uh, comes out with in the next in the next couple of months. Nitro baby, log me. <laughs> yeah, thanks very much, Hunter. Really appreciate it. You guys have a great one. Cheers. Bye. See ya. Thanks. Cheers. Cheers.